What's up everybody, this is Hoodie and today we're looking at Trike Me's uh, Certain Doom CTF room and it was a, it is a hard left room and starting it was a medium box but uh, it was quite fun to do and I learned quite a bunch while doing that so let's begin uh, let's just read the description Bob has since joined the Cert team and developed a nifty new site is there more than meat side so it's just basic uh, description and let's just start the CTF I'll walk you guys through it let's just first connect to the track me VPN I made a Cert team directory and let's see if we can ping the IP yes we can Let's do and map basic scan on it and let's see what do we have. We have a port 80 open, port 8080 and the SSH. So let's see what we got on port 80. Hello world, super secret admin and we just got rickrolled. Okay, if we go to the source code and you see there is a super secret admin panel and uh, there we go. We got a subdomain but it isn't much useful, right? It's just another rabbit hole and we got redirected to the Rick Ashley. <laughs> okay, so let's just go to that host. Oh, I have these. <laughs> Hold up. Let me take the IP again and let's see what do we have. Admin dots are doom dot dhm. Okay. Let's see what we have. That's again Brick Ashley, nothing much. And we can go ahead and run Ferox Buster on uh, port 80, but I don't think we will find anything valuable. So I'll just run for the sake of the CTF and let's see. You can take the IP again and we're gonna use sec list uh discovery web content and directory made to three medium yep okay let's see and we also have port 8080 open let's see what's there and it's a http status 404 there is nothing there and so it's quite good to fuzz there because there might be some directory or some folder nope let's see port 8080 and we're gonna use the same word list sec list discovery web content and directory 2.3 medium let's save it in fuzz.txt file Let's see what do we have. Right away we have reports. Okay. Let's see what we got there. And main.js site.web manifest. It's nothing there, just some basic stuff. Hello? Why is it not working? Am I just crashing the server? Hold up. Word 880 doesn't seem to work. Maybe let me just stop the fuzz and let's see. It should. Okay, so it was probably Ferox Buster. <laughs> so that's why you shouldn't run these tools in a production like enterprise or real world environment and let's see we have our end map back and it's just has static and uh, port 80 and on port 80 we got apache tomcat 9 right so let's see we also have port 99 but it's just closed so let's focus on the report so hydra's had computer emergency response team and we can report a vulnerability here we can upload a file so there's a file upload functionality and it just says we can upload pdf formats but are we going to do that absolutely not so let's just intercept the request and burp 
and let's just upload a normal file. Let's do word test.txt and let's see if we can do that. Certain doom test.txt upload. Let's go back to burp. There we go. And let me send it to repeater. Let's see. Uh, can you guys see it? I'm not sure, but okay. So work, let me send the request and there we go, 200, okay, we can successfully upload any file type other than PDF or so. So and it even tells us uh, where the file is getting uploaded. So that's pretty interesting, right? And it's Tomcat uh, 9, so by default, you can upload JSP, uh, MSO Venom, WAR files, just to get a reward show, but I don't think that uh, that would work. So. It's just basic a Google search Apache Tomcat 9 exploit. Let's just do that. And there we go. Remote code execution exploit in Apache Tomcat 9.0.27. And there are other, uh, we got CVE 2020-9484. And let's see what we have in the CVE. Okay. So it's fantastical and there is a RCE exploit. It just says, in order to use the script, uh, why uh, your serial is needed, and so the uh, so this vulnerability exists due to insecure input validate uh, input validation when processing serialized data and uploaded file names. So it doesn't validate uh, which file or what data we are uploading. So we can even up uh, like upload a serialized like serialized payload in the file uh, and the when it get deserialized our remote code would be executed on the system if you're getting what i'm saying right and we can even control when it get deserialized by just going over to the j session cookie id and we can just put the directory travel so so let's just take a look at the steps we need to take so we firstly need uh vice serial i already have it you can just uh like uh get it from this github or you can just google and get the jar file for that and after that we can run this cve payload uh, cve bash script but we wouldn't get a, a reverse shell using this uh, we need some changes here so let's see what uh what he's doing right here hold up can we okay there we go so first of all it's just creating a payload.sh and then it's trying to create a serialized payload into a file called download payload dot session and then it's uploading the file and it's creating it's creating three serialized payload files uh second one just granting it permissions and third one executing our payload basically a reverse shell there you go right and after that it's just uploading the payload to the target ip using the j session id cookie and directory travels so in that okay that makes sense after uploading it triggers the dc uh, it triggers the deserialization so the payload get executed and finally we get our shell so it's pretty pretty simple we can do it in various ways we can use curl we can use burp uh what's whatever it's just uh let me walk you guys through it so first of all we need uh the y uh what was the name of it hold up we need the YSO serial file so let me just google that jar file there we go we can download it from here and we can go to the releases we need this file and we can just click on it and download let me turn on the burr proxy what okay uh certain doom we can download it here no bro come on okay done so and if we go back to the room ch uh, challenge room and i don't want to show the flags uh so hold up let me reset my progress i mean i uh what do i say 
I'll try my heart to not show you the flag, so it's good. We can complete this now. And if we look at the hint of the first flag, today's lucky number is 11. So uh, we would have like we would have guessed it, but it's just pointing out to the Java version we need to use. If we take a look at Java version, we see I'm using 21 uh, JDK and you know, so we have to use uh, specifically Java 11 for like to creating these payload files, uh, serialized payload files. And we can use, uh, we can just do install Java SDK 11. I don't even remember the command. Let me just grab for that install. So there you go. You can just do as uh, sudo apt install open JDK 11 JDK. <laughs> How is was using Java. So yeah. So you can install it using that and it will be located at user. Uh, let me just find it. Java 11. Can we do that? It was something like user lib. Oh God. I'm not sure. Hold up. Let me just do this and let's see where we have user bin Java. Yeah, there we go. So it will be stored in user lib JVM Java 11 and in bin directory there will be Java binary that you can use. Okay, so we're going to use that. And first of all, we need to create a payload file. We can just do rev.sh and the shebang line user bin bash and our famous bash reverse shell payload dav tcp your triacne ip port you'll be listening on and that's it that's all we need to do now we can run netcat listener here on port 1337 and now we need to create these session serialized files and then upload them and boom, we'll have our payload, uh, we'll have a reverse shell. So we, uh, my caps lock is on. User lib JVM Java 11 binary Java. Come on, okay. Jar and we can specify that via the serial file. And now we're gonna use, we can just press enter to see the help options. And we're gonna use this common collections too because if we go back to this uh the guys using that so we got to trust them comments collections too and after that we can just specify our command oh, and we even need to set up a python server on port 80 or whatever because it will be it will be using curl and next we can specify our ip to get that file from rev.sh and save that to temp rev.sh and finally create the payload file payload.session we can use this command to create the payload file but let me show you what would happen if you didn't take a look at the hint and just use java and you know so there we go let me just use my java and you see uh, error while generating uh, or serializing payload and it's just getting an error, right? So let's take this and see if we can get the answer from chat GPT. If, if it would help uh, system introduced in Java 9 or above, run on Java 8. Uh, we can use Java 8, but hmm. So it just tell uh, it just basically tells us it's a Java version, right? That's getting in the way. So you could have just guessed it, like okay, it's pointing out to Java, and uh, I'm not sure, but the room creator mentioned it somewhere in the Discord chat that 
uh, the wires are serial by default, like by not by default, but most significantly used in Java 11. I, I'm not sure what I'm saying, but yeah, just go ahead and use Java, man. <laughs> Java 11 specifically. Hold up. Oh god, I'm not typing the command back. User alert to JVM Java 11. Ben, there we go. And now we have our file payload.session. You see, it's a Java serialization data version 5. And this way, now we can upload it. We can use curl or we can even intercept the request and burp and directly even deserialize it, right? So we can do both, right? I'm going to do both. So uh, let's see. Uh, let me take the IP. Uh, let me take the, like, the URL. It was upload if you mentioned it and we can upload using f and at the rate our file name there we go and let's see oh what am i doing wrong hold up doing something wrong there we go you see I was not specifying this there we go our file is, is uploaded successfully and how do I got this upload file uh, param uh, we can actually intercept the request in burp but hold on where is my burp did my burp just crashed I don't know why it's happening it happened a lot of times even yesterday so let's see I don't know why it's crashing for some reason uh, we can go to the HTTP history and we can upload our payload.session we can click upload there we go uh, if we send it to repeater and you see the name of the parameter is upload file so that's how I got it and after uploading it, you see here, uploaded, we can directly change the J session ID, uh, cookie here, J session ID cookie here to, you know, trigger it and we can go back to the root of the uh, system and then manually call it temp upload payload, right? And let's see what we have. You will see we have a 500 internal server error there we go and if we take a look back at our terminal you see our code get executed it successfully curled a river shell and stored on that box in the temp directory right so that's how we would know if we successfully uploaded our shell and the next step which is super simple is to just trigger it and for that we would need another uh another a serialized payload we, we will call it exec exec session and we would just uh directly run the our river shell using bash and the location we uploaded it and there we go done we can use curl to upload it exec session there we go and now we can call it reports uh, we can use this cookie J session ID we can go back 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 user local tomcat user local tomcat temp uploads what temp uploads and we can just specify the name of our file exec and we should have uh we should have a real shell hold up <laughs> i'm missing oh i'm using double quotes nope uh where did i mess where did i mess up mm, cookie j session id 
use the local tomcat temp uploads exec temp uploads payload hmm I typed everything right and held up. Let me go back to the J session ID and execute payload. Op sample uploads payload. Oh, my bad, man. I'm giving space here. Maybe that's why. Nope. Uh, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Cookie, J session ID. It shouldn't matter, right? J session ID. J session ID. I'm spelling everything correctly. Still don't know what's happening, but okay. Uh, let me take a look at it again. Let me trigger our payload, man. Payload. Even that didn't get triggered. Okay, we are definitely missing something. Copy as curl. There we go. Oh, oh boy. We don't need that. Curl. User agent. Uh, where is the cookie? Oh, it's specifying it as hyphen B. It's specifying it as a cookie, not a header. But we can use header. There should be no issue. But we can try this. Okay. No, never mind. We can just do cookie. There we go. And let's see if it, if it will get executed right now. What? What? There we go. It got executed. We got 500 internal error. So I don't know why it didn't work with the header. It should work. I like the first time around when I did the room, it worked with the header. But I must be messing something up. We'll take a look at it later. But let's execute our file. And there we go. We have our shell as root. And if we check uh, the root of the file system, you see, we are inside a Docker environment, but hold up. Let me take a look back at the curl command again. Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Cookies, generation ID, exec, and it worked. It worked yesterday, I'm telling you guys. And let me close the session and let's try it again. I need to change the IP here. Let's see. Hyphen edge cookie. J session ID. There we go. What was I spelling wrong? Uploads exec. I did the exact same thing. Maybe I was just spelling J session ID. I'm not sure. You can get, you guys can comment down and tell me what did I do wrong. So. So we got our initial foothold and if we just lsla there is a flag and this is the first flag so now we need to get to the user and I think we are done with this first CVE. You can read about it uh, more you can just ask ChatGPT what, uh, what the CVE was but I guess uh, I explained it on my end. Now let's see what do we have. Uh, if I just do if config and Oh, there's no if config. We can just cat as at the host and we see we have another host. So this Docker environment is running uh, like this container is running on two different networks. And so we need to pivot, right? I'm going to use a Ligolo NG to pivot. We can use chisel too, but I just prefer Ligolo because it just works pretty nice. Uh, binaries Ligolo NG. Legal proxy, and we can just press hyphen H. We can use self-cert, start it. There we go. 
you can go ahead and Google how to set up Ligolo and it's just basic. Go to Ligolo ng uh, Ligolo ng GitHub. There we go. You can turn burp. Let's just keep burp on. Or maybe turn it off. I don't know. It might cause some. And there we go. My VM decided to crash just at this moment. My bad, my burp just crashed and not my burp, my whole VM just crashed and <laughs> it didn't even make sense. So let's go to what we were doing, Legolo NG. And while I was away, uh, I even just Googled why is the serial works with what version of Java. And if you just open the first one, it just directly tells you Java 11. So you, you could have got that from there. No issue. And go to this and go to the releases. You can download, you need to download the agent for our target machine and proxy for your own machine. Uh, get alpha. Oh, what? Where is. Hold up, there's something wrong. We got, uh, you need to download this Linux AMD agent, and there we go. Uh, Linux legal and you proxy for. Where is it? Linux AMD? So you need to download these two zip files and then unzip them and you would have these binaries that I have right now. We need to even get the shell again. I'm sorry. Up P and hold up. Let me just do that and do that here. Uh, we need to do curl. And the problem we were not getting a reverse shell uh, was because of if you take a look at it, a look at the command we were using. There were three dots here, so that was the error. I was, <laughs> I just got it after rewatching the previous before crash video, and okay, so that was the error. And if we just do that, we would have got the shell. Okay. Very nice. So now we can, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, you can now Google how to set up Ligolo. You just need to create a IP add ton tap. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember the commands, but uh, you need to add a ton tap device named Ligolo. Uh, hold up. So there we go. IP ton tap add. Uh, now you need to specify user. I just use root so root and then mode ton We need to set up a ton device and ton, ton interface. So uh, Tap is used for I think uh, Ethernet devices. So there we go You you run this and then you run IP link set Ligolo up Cannot find device Ligolo Oh Hold up hold up hold up hold up Yep, uh, I forgot to run these commands myself. I beat and tap add user root mod ton ligo low. Ligo low, if I spell that right. Okay, IP links at uh, ligo low up. And if I do if config now, we would have a ligo low interface. So that's looking pretty good. Next thing we need to run the legal proxy self cert. We can set up a custom listening address, but by default, we would have port 11,601 binaries legal legal proxy self cert. We can just do that. We are good to go. There we go. We are listening on port 11,601. Next, uh, next thing we need to do, uh, but one pretty cool thing that, uh, like that was awesome. I I saw it in Jaxafat's write up, and uh, I think it's pretty good to mention. We can get uh, we can just Google uh sorry nmap static binary and let me just Google that static binary and from this Andrew D brothers GitHub repo we can just download this nmap binaries that statistically uh, statically uh, what do we call it compiled 
<laughs> I'm having trouble speaking. Okay, so we can just transfer it here on the box and scan it from here. Do we have a map? We don't have file command. Oh, it's no. Yeah, <laughs> it's not fun. Okay, so let me. Oh, the shell is unstable. We don't even have Python or even script command or even open SSL to stabilize our shell. So uh, let me type it again. Tenet 47242.8000. It was binaries and map. And there we go. This way we can scan the internal network from here and move forward. We don't even need to pivot that much. But we do have to pivot to, to like, you know, to get the final flag in the second one. So, and map, and we know we had two hosts, twenty point three and two, but uh, we have interest in zero point two one, and let's just run and map on it. It'll take some time. Uh, let me get another reverse shell on the box. Till then, four 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 four, and we can just create another ter terminal window and let's see uh, java there we go hold up let me just vi rep.sh we can just copy rep.sh to world.sh and edit the port on this one we can do 4444 there we go and now we can run java uh vol.sh we can call it exec.session come on there we go and let me do java mm -hmm. java which one was it there we go so we can call it vol.sh and change here payload.session oh user lib jvm 11 then there we go so now we can upload it using curl there we go oh, 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 oh. f upload file is equal to at the rate payload.session there we go and we need to specify upload here and done now we can let's just upload exec2 then we can execute both what happened exec.session what oh it was my terminal messing up okay there we go and now we can curl where is the cookie there we go we need to call payload first and we can just use silent mode there we go uh hold up hold up hold up we got it and oh our end map is back and why I used nmap here and why it was a clever idea because it would actually tell you this host name it's library right and now we can run nmap on uh, we can run nmap uh, just a basic ping scan like you know just checking which hosts are alive on that subnet 20.0.24 let's do this and let's wait for some time Till it run till then we can get our shell exec uh, what happened what did I mess why don't we have a shell hold up rm dot state we don't need that session we have x second payload dot session vol dot sh hold up 
uh i think i exit that session what command did i used bash camp oh i didn't specify sh here my bad guys uh next we can upload it again oh i just executed it no we need to upload it come on man yep now we can execute it exec and now we should have our shell there we go and we have our nmap report back uh we have it's just ethernet and we have point zero point two and zero point three okay and there we go we have both our host names library and library back let's go and add it in our etsy host file let me make it bigger it would it would come in uh you know handy after we have successfully pivoted uh let, let me do that first so you would understand why need, why we needed to do that and binaries binaries legolo ng legolo agent and let's just save it in agent there we go and now we can connect to our legolo proxy and we can give it executable permissions i don't think we need this python server now and we can run agent connect to our 10 ip host 11601 and we can do ignore cert if we press enter there we go we have a session agent joined that now we can just do session and we have a session press enter and we can just start a tunnel uh, tunnel proxy but before that we need to so we can do that but before that we need to run another command we can do ip root add uh, our subnet uh, 24 to device legolo there we go after that we can just run ip root command and you see we have it oh there we go now we can just press start and our tunnel would start we can just go to oh, we can close this and we can even close this oh no now we can just go to 172 0 0.2 and there we go now we can access that internal network on the docker container host from our machine we have successfully pivoted let me increase some time here so we got a document library web page and just a normal web page that's used stencil and we can upload files here again and we can click on if it's hidden or not let's come back to it later but uh what we need to do is let's go to the network tab and let's try doing something let's just do a a whatever let's try to filter out and we made a get request it didn't went we see no response nothing it's taking some time let's try to upload a file let's just do test and let's do test okay let's submit it there we go it's making an options request probably api right and it says unknown error you see strict origin when cross origin so it's not going and let's wait for this command let's wait for our file command to get executed and there we go our filter command didn't went through no response nothing transferred none and why is it not uploading it's making a fetch request using options method interesting okay uh let's try to intercept it in burp but okay we got a response back 
and what does it say it says course failed what is course if we just google course failed you would know what's course it's course is a request airing so a uh, more commonly used solution to resolve course error is to use a serverless function. Not that. Uh, let's just go to chat, Jupiter uncle. Mother, tell us. Oh, let me make it bigger. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> course failed on a request. What to do? It would exactly tell you what it is and all like it will tell you exactly what you needed to know and to do this etf basically let's just go ahead and intercept this request in burp uh why did i own the socks proxy there we go and proxy http history let's just try to run it again or even better let's just take the ip and let's just make the request to the ip interesting it didn't get intercepted in burp okay it did get so after just you know requesting to the internal host it made four requests it made a request to author a documents it made a request to documents right let's just uh take this or whatever request let's just take this and move to the repeater and send it can we send it what okay i think we need to wait uh, let's see when a course uh, cross is a resource sharing request fails it's typically due to the server not allowing the request requesting allowing the requesting domain or method right so we uh, it's something related to the origin right checking pre light request options method course often fails due to a failed pre light request and options request sent by the browser to check permissions before the actual request okay so it's making sense, right? We were also making the options request to check the permissions if we have. Uh, but here we do not not getting the response. 304 not modified. About the documents, man. Okay, we can send it. Let's wait for the response. Uh, oh my god, why is it so very slow and taking so much time and not getting to the point what do we have here right it's not giving me any response let me just upload a file right test name it test submit and let's go to that and we have our options and let's wait for its response there we go uh, oh it's even intercepting chat gpt When will you get me the response back, brother? Uh, but let me Google. Hold up. Let's not change this. Let's just do course or trigger. Let's do that. Um. Did it give me any response for that document? I'm not sure. Super weird. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's wait uh, till it actually do something. And let's see. Or sports figure. Bro, come on. Like, don't do me like that. Let's submit it again. And let me do this. There we go. Let's wait for the reply. And if we read through it, uh, it's to protect from CSRF and same origin policy. But you see, we can change the origin to you know to bypass this and course restriction so that's what we needed to do here 
and if we just take a look back at the burp I'm just waiting till we get the response so we can just do it here let me see um and even before that uh if you take a closer look it's making a request to library back on port 8080 right but if you go back to the end map uh why is it super big man my eyes are hurting okay so let's go to the tab and i'm sorry if it's messy but that's the way it is and we got another host 0.03 and it's the library back one because uh, 02, 02 was a uh, library. Where was it? There we go. 02 is library and 03 is library back. So we are pretty sure on the library back it's port 8080 open. And so if we just add these here, uh, library and 20.03 as library back. And now if we try to make a request on this port, you will see we will be redirected to a login page and let's just go to the library interesting oh there we go <laughs> i was like why is it not redirecting that's weird okay so we got the login page now and there we go we are unauthorized so you know, so you see, if we if we just change the origin there on the course not accepted error. Um, there we go. Let's just move to this and let's just send it again. You see, four zero three course rejected. If we just change the origin to, let's just try localhost maybe. You see, we could bypass it using localhost, or let's just do library because it was making request to the library back, right? So we got it. And after do, uh, after adding those hosts in our Etsy host file, if we make a request to it again, we would be redirected to a login page. And it uh, here comes a CTFE part to the box uh, for the user flag. If we go back to the description, we see Bob's finally joined the third team and has created a new front page. You can use Hydra to brute force or even burp intruder but it's just a basic guess and the username and password was bob and bob we can log in using that uh, those passwords and we can just submit it there we go and j security check and after submitting those passwords we got a cookie called creds right so this is the cookie we need to uh, if we go here unauthorized and let's just add cookie grads there we go let's see what do we have now um am i doing this here? oh not here we don't need to do that here uh my bad so we got this cookie and after this we here we just redirected got redirected to the login page we couldn't see anything and can we go to the documents here now uh, because there's no file here but if we go back to debugger and see the javascript files it's just source code analysis and we do need this so there is a file called entry.js and let's read through it i can't increase uh hold up let me copy it and let's just create a new file there we go now we can read it and if we come down below uh, you would see uh, on the per 8080 there is slash documents and there it's taking these five uh, parameters title author file name file and uh, oh, sorry six and date created it's just uh, giving us these and it's take these four parameters name author and file name sorry three I'm messing the numbers here, so my bad, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm lagging to sleep. So, next thing, yeah, we can even download the file by going to the documents download, and after that, just the file name with the extension, right? And that's it. So, 
from here we could uh let me go to the port 8081 library back host library back port 8080 and if you just make a request here it's nothing here if we just go to the documents right it's still nothing here but if we add a cookie called creds right oh there we go uh, let me clear the cookies right let me make a request again make sure we don't have any cookie here next thing we can add a cookie name creds and put that value here there we go if we add this cookie here we would see content there we go now we have now we can see these files hello.txt uh, author is bob and file name is hello and the hidden is false right if you like uh we can do it in burp there we go proxy here is nice and there we go let's try to pass it author is equal to bob There we go. If I just pass it an empty parameter author, let's see what we have. So we now have two files. Another one is owned by a user called Hydra, and that's flag uh, flags.docx file. And we have Bob. And if we go back to the source code, we could download these files by going to the documents download and the file name, right? So let's do that. Uh, we can just do it in terminal uh, curl and HTTP library back port 8080 and it was documents download and we know the pop file was hello.txt we can save it in hello.txt there we go and oh sorry 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 my bad we need to specify the cookie threads uh there we go now we can cat there we go it just contains hello world that's it and we can download a flags.docx file too just to see what's there you're gonna regret it my terminal is messing up so my bad flags.docx uh, we can go to the just make a request in the browser but I love curl, so we're gonna do it this way. There we go. And if we check file flags.docx, it's a Microsoft Word document. We can try open opening it, but we can't. Uh, for some reason, we can just try to do strings and see if it has something uh name like dhm. Nothing, and we can pass it okay nothing and there is also a tool called pdf to uh pdf to text i guess yeah it's not a pdf though <laughs> okay so we can try unzipping it uh there we go now we have a image file that's probably a gif word media image dot gif and we again got Rick Rolled, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, so that's interesting. Okay, so that was not the flag uh, we have. Um, but another thing, let's try to make this hidden to true. Let's just try to make hidden to true. And how about we do all this in curl? okay there we go and instead of requesting it to we can just request the documents and hidden is equal to true we can remove this and we can pipe the output let's see what the output is so you see the output is a little messed up right so we can use something called jq to process the json data and show us in a nice format so now we got two files owned by bob that were hidden and named to do.md and chat.log. 
So let's download these files and let's see what do we have here. Uh, to do dot md. There we go. And another was uh, chat dot log, right? Chat dot log. Let's check it again. Chat dot log. Yep. There we go. Let's check what's in to do dot md. Bob's to do list fix CVE. Uh, that's the initial CVE we used to gain access to that Docker container and talk to the SOC about brute force detection uh, for the Bob Bob, but it was pretty guessable. Fix authentication issues in the docs library. Okay. And check for SQL injection in the library backend and all good for the client access pen test. Shouldn't be any SQL injection now. We are using a proper framework. Okay. So let's check what's in chat.log. Uh, okay, never mind. I just showed the flag, but that's fine. Uh, Bob, hey, do you have any specs for the tokens? Uh, Hydra. So now we see, uh, even here, when we just uh, specified, hold up. We didn't make the request. So when we just go to the documents, it just shows us one file, hello.txt. But after we pass it author without any value, we, uh, we found there was another author that was Hydra. So now let's just try to find Hydra's hidden file here. But before that, let's take a look at the chat log. Uh, so Hydra, it's a standard JWT now. So it's just pointing us to that there is JWT like comes in play and yeah, but what claims should we use? So in JWT, we have a header, a payload section, and at last we have a signature, right? So in the payload, we have claims that just uh, specify what our JWT is, right? Who owns the JWT token, what prompts it has, and different ways, right? We can just use ChatGPT that we're gonna use right now, right here, but it's a pretty guessable step to get to the last flag. So uh, it keeps me stuck for like quite some time till uh, zero day and zero X Bob helped me understand just th these things better. And uh, next the Hydra just use the standard framework auth and oh right, the algorithm you're using has a major vulnerability though. You might want to update that or at least patch your Java, right? I get on that soon. Uh, we are just an internal service anyways. The firewall will protect us. It's just basic and we got our second flag here. so. It's pointing us to something related to JWT and authentication error, uh, authentication vulnerability, and it, it right here, it says the algorithm we are using has a major vulnerability though. Okay, that's pretty interesting, right? And if we go back and there's a hint that says supersonic subatomic. If we just Google that, we would find uh, it's, a, it's, a Java, uh, it's a Java library, right? Let me turn on my bar proxy. There we go. So we found out uh, they are, uh, here they are using Quarkus Java uh, library or whatever. Uh, now, next thing we can, uh, if, you, if you just Google Java cryptography CVE, whatever, we would find the first link to a uh, psychic signature Java vulnerability and a couple more, right? So what's a psychic signature? It's where we do not specify a valid signature in the JWT token. So there is no validation in the signature, but it's still, the server still accepts the JWT token and provides us response, right? So uh, we got a CVE ID, right? Let's just take and Google it. So we got the second link that pretty much explains what's a psychic signature and what do we need to do. So it's particularly in this algorithm of JWT ECDSA. So we can go to the JWT.io and, but let me uh, Google this and try to search something on GitHub. TLS park, um, what else? Vulnerability in Oracle Java SE. Let me Google search psychic signature. So it's this demos the psychic signature vulnerability, and we have it here. 
it's just building using Java, showing us demo. So basically, this vulnerability exists in ECDSA algorithm where uh, in signature R and S both are equal to zero and in DER encoding. Uh, okay, till then, let's do our research. And here, when I do, let's come back and just take some things in regards. When I just specified author without any value, it just give me Hydra and Bob. So we know right now we have Hydra user and let's go ahead and check hidden files for Hydra, right? Author is equal to Hydra and hidden is equal to true. Let's do that and see what we get. So we got again the two files owned by Bob, but we couldn't get any files that were owned by Hydra and were hidden, right? So there is something fishy here, but one thing that Bob mentioned that was pretty, I, I, I wouldn't, I would have never guessed that, but uh, if we go back to the source code, uh, here we can even use, uh, what do we call it? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Here, we can use a document, uh, either the file name, or we can even use the ID here, right? So. Bob said uh, the largest ID seems to be of chat.log and if we just append one to it we would see something else happen. So let's just do that and see what we get. Documents and hold up, hold up, hold up. What am I doing? What the fuck happened? Bro. What happened to my mouse? <laughs> what? Send to repeater. Okay, never mind. Let's just do that. HTTP 1.1. And here we have chat.log, right? If we just do one here. Oh my god. Burp. Come on, bro. If we just append one, we got another file called specs.pdf and that was owned by Hydra and it was hidden. So that was pretty interesting. But if we go, uh, go back and try to download the file, download specs.pdf, for some reason we cannot download the file. I don't know why or what's the reason behind it, but we can't download the file because maybe we need some sort of authentication or authorization uh, to download this file as Hydra and this credits cookie just doesn't allow us because uh, I think it's of, uh, what do you say? It's it's a Bob user and there is JWT in place to check for access controls that gives us access to Hydra user and so we can just make a request and download the specs.pdf file. We can even use Quarkus uh, JWT and let's see, using JWT R back. So this is where it comes interesting. If we just use ChatGPT, what's R back? It's access control based on the rules, the uh, role, sorry, role based access control. And if we Google uh, R back JWT claims, as if we go back to the terminal, it says, all right. Uh, yeah, but what claims should be used? So it's a direct hint. So JSON, uh, JSON Web Token interface defines methods for accessing claims in the underlying JWT. We can even use ChatGPT to, uh, what, what are the custom claims and role-based access control? We can use several here. So we have a user role. Um, hold up. We don't have. A direct reference to it. Uh, let's just take a look at the carcass. Uh, so we know it's using small, small right JWT framework. Um, we can take a look at that documentation. How of the small? It's just nothing. Just trying to tell us how to install that. But you have to guess those. Uh, you know, custom claims. Not custom, but uh, claims that are used in specifically R back, right? Role based access control. So let's go back to the chat GPT and see. Uh, so you you get the 
algorithm from here that we use ES256 and sub name admin is by is is a default uh, claim is a default claims that comes with JWT and RS is equal to zero and it's an invalid signature right so this is what chat GPT gave us but we need something else we need the psychic signature we can just google fuck chat GPT psychic signature in JWT uh testing json web targets oasp can we get that psychic signature from here there we go we got it so plain text and der encoded this is the text we need to append it uh so let's go back and let's try just using this let's try to change it to hydra because we want to test for hydra user and yes admin is equal to true it's just uh, issued time when was the jwt issued to us so let's take this jwt and go back to burp bro my cursor is fucking fucked i don't know why guys please i cannot work like this and uh, let me restart the burp it's super super uncomfortable too like restarting verb over and over again i don't know what's happening but okay we can even use uh what do we say curl now you decided to do that okay so there we go let's just try to use curl too um we can just make a request to documents and cookie I think we can remove this cookie and add another authorization. You can uh, you can use ChatGPT or Google how to specify JWT and headers, bearer, and specify the JWT here. And if we do that, we got nothing in return. Okay, that's interesting. There you go. Uh, let's use proxy and take a look back at documents. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me make a request at it again so we can intercept it. Go to the repeater and now we can specify authorization, bearer, and that JWT. Uh, let's remove that. Oh. So we see. We are unauthorized. Uh, so no, it's not working, right? What if we append this uh, psychic signature because it was the part of the CVE, right? If we just Google again, Java cryptography CVE, it says uh, psychic signature Java vulnerability. So we need to use this and we can just go ahead, bro, come on. Oh my God. Okay, let's use ChatGPT. What's the value of R is equal to S is equal to zero and psychic signature DER encoded encoded. Just give me the fucking value man. Oh my god. Okay, uh, do we have something here? Token dot dev. Yeah, we can use that website too. It's pretty interesting. Uh, there we go. Uh, Chad GPT, what are you doing, man? DER encoder online. Online ASN DER file generator. Seriously. Can we do this? I need to specify a JSON data. Mm, I, I'm pretty sure it's wrong because, yeah, right. Never mind. Oh my god. <laughs> Chat GPT, you're fucking weird ass. Fucking shit. Okay. Uh, let's open blackbox.ai. 
or let's just do chat GPT again and so we are unauthorized with this uh, it should work let's specify hyphen I for the headers right oh we got invalid numeric literal okay that's interesting there we go I was using JQ that's why so we got a uh, 401 unauthorized so our JWT is fucking wrong here and my chat GPT is stuck never fucking mind can I at least type okay uh, let's go back to the Quarkus JWT documentation and use ChatGPT to get the claims. Give me the claims used in R back in JWT, JWT, and also give me a Python script to generate a JWT token with signature. Uh, signatures value psychic signature and let's see if it gives us something now okay so we got it here and uh, it's taking so much time why is my chat GPT super 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 stuck I don't even fucking know it's super weird I cannot even use okay never mind but uh, let's use ES256 here and here are so this is the first part that's just header encoded in base 64 then our payload encoded in base 64 and finally the signature part after the second dot and let's see we have our Python script and So here we have super super many claims our back role based access control and we have a sub roles admin or whatever uh, expiry time issued time audience and JWT ID okay that's pretty interesting and we can go ahead and use that but uh, it's still it's still not gonna get us uh, held up Um, exploiting Java psychic signature vulnerability. I can't even see it's super small vulnerability in a CTF. So give me other claims that we can use in our back for authentication and permissions and the psychic signature signature in CVE let me copy that again and please I oh got uh, so we just needed this and the psychic signature but I'm not fucking sure why it's not giving us the psychic signature. Give me the psychic signature in Java where R is equal to S is equal to J and JWT. Please fucking give me. Wow, it's fucking fucking stuck. Oh my god. PSI psychic signature. I think this was that where it was in the image. So what I'm gonna do is uh this pretty nice trick. We can what we can do is uh wrong. It was this uh copy image link. It starts from M A Y C M A Y C A Q A C A Q A. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, we can remove this. And can use M A Y 
M A Y C A. Hold up. M A Y C A Q A C A Q A Q A C A Q A. So this was a JWT we needed to use, and let's copy that and make a request. We are still unauthorized. Seriously, don't know, but I'm messing up. Let me take a look back at uh oh god ctf dhm certain doom and let me take a look back at jwt.py and let's see we even specify the issuer but that that shouldn't be an issue just take this and run it again with Bro, come on. It worked. We can now list the files with this JWT, but what did we mess? Hold up, it shouldn't be something. It's Hydra using group and IAT. M A Y C A Q A C A Q A. We're doing everything right. What's that issue or problem? Hold up. Let me take this again and go back to generator, paste this. We do not. Hold up, hold up, hold up. We do not need this. Let's just delete this and let's do this and let's see if we have, if we get anything. There we go. Uh, let me do erase that and let's use M A Y C A Q A C A Q A. Let's see. There we go. So I think we need also needed to specify issuer, but still I wonder why. Uh, I don't think Bob used that. We can just specify it like this, and it should still work. Uh, let me let me try. Wow, now it worked. Well, uh, what did I do? Hold up, Hydra user. What were we doing wrong? JWT.py groups user UPN Hydra IAT EXV MLICA. But then why? Hold up, PWD. Yeah, we are in the right directory. We got this JWT and the JWT we got using Ryan's script. Oh, that's interesting. That's different. What are we doing wrong? Well, may different because of IAT and expiration and probably ISS, but we don't need ISS. Oh my god, we are using HS256 here. Okay, never mind, but uh, you get the idea, right? Uh, we could have used just UPN, the, uh, what do we call UPN in JWT? Unique principal name, user principal name, sorry, uh, is an active directory attribute that uniquely describes a user that carried out the Azure Active Directory world. Uh, ignore that, it's just uh, used for authentication in our bag, right? Role based access control JWT. So we could have guessed all that. Uh, I don't know why my chat GPT was super mad at me for that. You get the idea, right? Uh, we got this and we can just use this. Where is it? We can even close this and use this token to. Wow. Hold up. 
there we go and now we can uh, specify hidden hidden is equal to true and author is equal to hydra and we would have got specs.pdf now we can just download it using the same uh, we can remove these download specs.pdf save it specs.pdf specs.pdf and why am I using JQ file spec.pdf there we go now we can use PDF to text specs.pdf let's use flag.txt and if we get that file uh, rg dhm there we go we have a flag this one is a fake one the first one was a flag the third flag we needed and that was a room basically so the JWT part was pretty the hardest for me. Like, okay, uh, well, I think my browser again fucking up, but never mind. So this is the room. It was pretty hard. Uh, like on the last part, the JWT part, it was like you could have uh get help from the Quarkus JWT documentation and could have guessed those claims, or. You can you could always mention the guys like Ryan and Bob or Jexofad on Discord to get a hint. Those guys are amazing, and I think that was it. Uh, I hope you learned something new. I'll see you till next time.